Get up. Everybody's up. Everybody's up. We're doing a movement break. We are going to do a movement break. So everybody's up. Everybody doing good tonight? All right. You've been sitting too long, right? You've been sitting too long. So we're going to do a little movement break. All right. So let's start with just marching in place, just right where you are. Marching in place. We got some, uh, I think we have some PE teachers out there. So if you don't follow me, follow somebody. Hey, there we go, right over there. All right. We're going to go to something called opposites. So you're going to lift one knee up and go opposite hand to opposite knee. Oh, I can see you okay. So it's looking, I think you're doing pretty good. Opposites here, opposites. Good. All right, now hands are here. We're going to make a tight fist beside your ears. This is called Mickey Mouse ears. So you're going to go open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. Now big Mickey Mouse ears up, down, up. That's cool. I like that. Up, down, up. You should see it from up here. Up. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> up, down, up, down. And we're going to go to gigantic Mickey Mouse ears. So down a little bit. So get a little squat. If you can, don't stay, don't sit when you get down. Because come up. There you go. Big Mickey Mouse ears. Big Mickey Mouse ears. Good. All right. Okay. Ten push-ups. Ready? No. Oh, okay. All right. We won't do that easy. We can do the wall push-ups here. Uh, take your shoulders. Roll them up and back. Great idea for your kids when they're slumped over their desk. Okay, so shoulders up and back. Up and back. Up and back, should feel good. Up and back, good. We're gonna do a little breathing right here. Hands are out, cross them, lock your fingers, breathe in. Take a deep breath through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Good job, stretch up. All right, you're good, you can sit down, good job. I'm looking for my remote. There it is. Yeah, should have had that already. Thanks, James. That was much needed. We needed to do that. You've been sitting too long. I know. I've been down the bottom basement pacing back and forth. And I know you've been up here. You've been up, <laughs> up here sitting for a long time. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of sitting, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you've heard this. But according to the CDC, sitting is the new smoking. This is true. The, the sitting lifestyle that our society is leading today, and not necessarily us, we're on our feet all day long, right? But the society in general, the sitting in traffic, the sitting when you get to work all day, the sitting in traffic again, sitting when you get home to watch that hour-long show, that, that sitting is leading us down a path that's just as unhealthy and risky as smoking. And if you were to look at our education system today, our American education system, it's kind of similar to our society. It reflects each other a little bit. Uh, in fact, if you were to um, look at, uh, well, I, I tell you what, I went out to recess the other day. And when I went out there, um, I literally saw two kids sitting on top of the monkey bars. So that's how well we have been teaching our kids to sit in the American education system. And this philosophy that we have that we should be sitting our kids for long periods of time, there's not really a name for it, because it would probably be negative. But it's what I, as a health professional and other health professionals, call the sit and get method. So we believe that we should be sitting for long periods of time so we can get lots of information. And that's just not good for our brain. And it's not good for our bodies. So the book Brain Rules by Dr. John Medina, he paints a picture that says, let's, okay, let's wipe the slate clean for a minute. And let's, let's imagine a educational system or an educational environment where um, it's the opposite of what our brain needs. It's the opposite of how our brain works. And if you were to design that, guess what you would have? What we have today in education. The opposite of what our brain needs. And 
I do want to say that it's, it's leading us, it's leading us down a path, a very unhealthy path for the whole child. You see, the whole child now, we look at not only the physical, but the emotional and social. The whole child, we know physically that we're in a health crisis in our nation. Uh, again, according to the CDC, every age group, every age group, there are percentages of people that are considered obese. And, and you heard me right, every age group, that includes preschoolers. According to the CDC, 9% of preschoolers in our nation are considered obese. 9%. Have you ever met a two-year-old? And by the time you get to high school, it's 20%. And by the time we become adults, it's one-third of us. So we know physically we're in a health crisis. But emotionally, I've talked to school counselors and school psychologists, and I keep hearing about how stressed out kids are and how anxious they are and how testing anxiety is just taken over because we test all the time. At least we feel like we do. And so all of these factors are happening. It's not just the physical, but it's the physical, emotional, and social. But I am here. I'm, I've painted a pretty bad picture. But I am here to tell you there's a solution. Yes, I know. I'm the physical education teacher tonight. And I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. And you're right. We need to make, another, make sure that we are really focusing on the health and wellness of our students, that it should be as important as our test scores, that we have to build that foundation for health and wellness from the very beginning. And so there is a solution. But don't take my word for it. Look at the research. Look at the data. Isn't that what we always hear? Data-driven, data, data, research. Well, according to Spark, the revolutionary new science of exercise in the brain, there's over 850 research studies on the effectiveness of physical activity on school-aged children. And they're all pointing in a positive direction, meaning a positive relationship to physical activity and school-aged children. That it helps with memory, and it helps with concentration, and it helps with... Uh, academics, and it helps with classroom behavior. It all points in that direction. 850 research studies. Look, there have been a lot of school reform in our country that we poured millions of dollars into with far, far less research than that. But we just ignore that. Surely, movement can't help our students, right? And I love this book because what I've gathered from this book is that the, the brain research the, the, that says exercise is so important to the brain, that it gives us all these, these big A words, that when we exercise and when we are engaged in physical activity and when our kids are playing, that it helps them to be more alert and more active, I mean, more uh, awake and more alive. It helps their brain to be more attentive in class. It gives them a better attitude. All these big A words. Why don't you take a look at this brain scan? So this is a brain scan of someone just sitting quietly. So before I came out here, this is what your brain looks like. <laughs> this is what your brain looks like now. Well, we didn't exactly walk. But to give you an idea of how our brains can really light up after just a 20 minute walk. This is not a 5K. This is not a vigorous workout. Just after a 20 minute walk. And I tell my teachers, but I've told them before, what brain do you want to teach to? The brain that is half asleep or the brain that has all those A words. They're alert and awake and attentive. So what I want to talk about today are some, some solutions that you can do just tomorrow, some practical things. Now, would I love school reform, some major school reform, where we say our schools are going to focus on health and wellness and it is going to be a priority? Absolutely. I, I would love to see that, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. 
It's going to happen with you if you can implement just a few little things, one thing at a time, starting tomorrow. So let's talk about those things. I propose that the, the morning, morning work time, morning announcements, the first 30 to 45 minutes, that instead of the sit and get method, let's have the up and ready method. Up and ready means that, first of all, they are up when they come in. Have a no sitting policy in your class for the first 30 minutes. This is the morning work time where you're half asleep and half awake. Right? And they're just kind of doing morning work. Well, at least have them stand. Have them stand while they're doing their morning work. Even better, have them on some kinesthetic balance boards and have them do some morning work around the perimeter of your room. Really engage them. Really turn their brains on at the beginning of the day. Better yet, engage them in brain games. You want to see tardies get better? They want to come to school. They can stand up play brain games, Rubik's Cubes, cup stacking, math games. Have them engage first thing in the morning. And then after they've been standing for a while, do what I do. Six years ago, I came up with a program called Jam Sessions. It's kind of what I just did when I came out here. Jam stands for Jump Start and Move at McKee, McKee Road. And what I do is go on closed circuit and I do exercises. And, the kid, and it feeds out to the, to the classrooms and the kids exercise with me. And I do this to get those brains lit up. So teachers, we work together. We should be working together. I'm lighting the brains up. Then it's your turn to feed them. So after that 30 or 45 minutes, yes, it's okay if they sit down now. You're starting your first literacy block. It's probably a 90-minute block, maybe math block. But don't abandon movement completely. Use movement as a tool. Use movement as a way to enhance your learning. You can see here that this teacher has science words on the board, and she's integrating movements with each word. And so that they're, they're moving through the content, moving through the curriculum. And I can tell you right now, that information, it's going to stick. It's, they're going to retain that because they've associated a movement with that, with that word. So I will say this. Research says that you really only have a very small window of time to teach your students. It says that you're, you take the age of the kid and then you add two. And that's how much time you have to really teach that student before you need to transition or move or get them into another activity or actually applying what they've learned. So kindergarten teachers, raise your hand. Any kindergarten teachers out here? Okay, you have five plus two. You have seven to eight minutes to teach what you need to teach them before it's time to get them engaged. And that's when you do this. That's when you get them up and you do a dance and you do a song and you move them. So use movement as a tool. Put your tool belt on, reach in, use movement. And if you don't like getting in front of your class and dancing or really moving, well, make a kinesthetic classroom. Allow kids to stand at a stand-up desk. Allow them to sit on a stability ball. Allow them to move throughout the classroom and move in different groups. So I'm a big believer in having more than one recess. Raise your hand if you think more than one recess would be a good thing. <laughs> Any bigwigs in here want to look around and see all these hands raised? Okay. Policy change, reform right here. So I'm a big believer in this. Obviously I am, but there's reason behind this. So you make it through your first 90-minute block, you need to recharge their brains again. So by the time you get to mid-morning, 9.30, 10 o'clock, integrate some kind of structured fitness program. Okay, so the first recess should be very structured, very fitness oriented. That means running laps on the track, counting their laps, doing some kind of aerobic exercise. Engage them in some kind of structured 
fitness activity because that's what's going to light their brain up and that's what's going to help you get more bang for your buck in the next session, the next math block or whatever it might be. And then the next recess, which is later in the day, needs to be exactly what recess is supposed to be, which is creative free play, just being themselves, just having a social time, just having a break to be able to be themselves and be kids. This is one of our play areas at our school. A picture is worth a thousand words. Doesn't just look like a creative play area. So I've given you some ideas, hopefully, some things that maybe you can take back tomorrow and maybe implement. And I would love to either start the conversation or continue the conversation with some of you on how we can do this. Again, you're not going to get major school reform tomorrow, but you can do little things to help your kids be more active and healthy. And just keep in mind that we're, you're also not going to um, be able to change everything. Like nutrition, for one. Our hands are tied with that sometimes. So we know how critical that is. But we're not able, that's not something we will be able to control all the time. Now, I will say, teachers, there is one thing you can do to help with nutrition. Don't be given food and candy as a reward. Okay, you can stop that tomorrow. But there are things that we cannot control. Think about what you can control in your, in your small world. So I'm going to end on a story. It's a story about my eighth grade son. And he came home from middle school on the day before winter break. And he walks into the door and he says, Dad, guess what my bus driver gave me? So first of all, he was talking to me. This was amazing. Okay, this was like, we're having, this is, you're actually telling me something about school. So this was awesome. But then after I got over that fact, oh, what did she give you? Well, he's holding up a paper bag, one of the old school lunch bags. He says, my bus driver said that she wants to get healthy, and she's trying to get us healthy. So I opened the bag, and inside was a small orange and a small apple. And I thought, wow, that's one person who took their small world, their bus, and they made it a healthier place. And that's what it takes. Think about your small world, which is your classroom. Think about if you're an administrator, your, your school is your world. Therapy room, if you're a therapist, your small world. And how can you make it a healthier place? Thank you.